being streamed. Uh, it's Corporate Services and Econ Economic Growth Overview and Scrutiny Committee, 10th of October at 10 a.m. So, first thing on my agenda is apologies for absence. Sean, have you got me? Okay. Uh, Baden Robinson and Ezra Children. Thank you. Okay, looking at the minutes of the previous meeting, uh, which was held on the 17th of July, 11th of July, sorry. Are we happy that there are two record? Yep, agreed. Okay, thank you. Go uh, version to sign. <coughs> ah, yes. I'll uh, put your pen for a second. Signed. Disclosure of members' interests. Um, I'm just going to uh, make a declaration um, that we are going to be talking about the COVID grant scheme later. And my business did receive one. Uh, it's not a um, it's not an interest that would require me to leave the room, but I just thought I'd put it on the record. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're making that, yeah. I'll, I'll make the same declaration. Okay. My wife's yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Sanderson. Anybody else? No. Right, uh, for plan of cabinet decisions, that's pages nine. Just on uh, that one, um, you'll note we have a we are due to have a meeting in November um, to discuss the budget. Page twelve. Sorry? On page twelve. Uh, um, yes, the budget um, is due to be on the eighth of November. We have um, had a recommendation from our Chief Financial Officer that we put that consideration of that item back to our meeting on December the 12th uh, because there will not be sufficient information to properly scrutinise that item in November. So are we members happy to put that back till December? Great, thank you. Uh, okay, first uh, report uh, is Council Tax Support Scheme. So I'll just ask Council Wimmer to introduce this. Then we'll Thank you, Chair. So I'll, I'll, br I'll briefly introduce this and then uh, I'm sure that the Section 151 officer will have uh, some comments to make. So this is a report that uh, comes before you uh, every year, as you'll be aware, uh, and it seeks to approve the local council tax support scheme for the next uh, financial year, 23 to 24, uh, and to ask that uh, you consider uh, that we continue to provide support uh, for those that qualify at a maximum level of 92% uh, of the council tax liability. Uh, as a footnote, um, before I move on to a little bit of the substance of the report, uh, you did, I believe, ask for a briefing note uh, which uh, sets out some of the specific uh, government assistance that's been provided to the council to distribute uh, with regard to council tax since uh, the COVID pandemic, and that's appended at the back of the report. Uh, looking at uh, the report, uh, it, it, you know, this report doesn't change significantly from year to year. Uh, we are providing that maximum level at 92%. Uh, we ask that, um, if you're so minded, that you uh, recommend that uh, Cabinet adopt that position for uh, the coming financial year. I would just note a couple of things uh, to, sort of to highlight in the report itself. Um, this, this scheme is something that we opt to do to make sure that we help those in the county who need our help the most. And to that end, we spend £25.7 million, pounds, or, or will spend £25.7 million, pounds, uh, subject to your recommendations going through to Cabinet, in order to achieve that. That is a, obviously a substantial sum uh, and in the, in the past year has uh, had uh, the result of uh, lifting thousands of people out of paying any council tax whatsoever uh, and thousands more uh, see their liability reduced uh, considerably. Uh, I point to the uh, table that uh, all members are probably familiar with by now uh, as uh, part of uh, the report under uh, point 17 which uh, compares Northumberland support to other local authorities in the northeast, uh, and uh, you can see again that only Durham, uh, so far as we're aware, have a uh, level of support that is uh, higher than that in Northumberland, uh, and you can see the various other councils there, a number of them that fall well below the level of support that is provided uh, by 
our council. If I just turn to the uh, support paper, uh, if, if I may, you can see that uh, the government uh, has uh, passported through the council huge uh, amounts of money uh, in terms of support over the three years uh, where we've been affected by the COVID pandemic. Um, and you'll see uh, there's been already some discussion, I think, in, in the press about uh, payments to households as we look to this winter uh, and beyond uh, in terms of what support we can provide uh, whilst energy bills uh, are projected perhaps to increase. And in particular, perhaps you can see uh, in uh, the middle of that page of 21, as it's marked on uh, my paper, a £400 payment to households not connected to the national electricity grid. And there does seem to have been some form of confusion um, by certain uh, politicians, without making it political, uh, about the level of support. This is a, something that is discretionary uh, and determined by the Council in terms of how it's apportioned this support. And again, we're protecting those people who need our help the most in, in the county we feel in terms of this breakdown. I would point out that this is, of course, the money that's passported through the council, but this isn't the extent of the support from government uh, uh, to those uh, people who perhaps need assistance most in this challenging uh, year, uh, winter that may come. Uh, so uh, to add to that, you, you, you should factor in as well the payments that have already been made uh, by government through uh, electricity providers, I think, uh, of £400. Uh, universe, if someone on universal credit, I believe, would um, re receive additional support of £650, an additional £150 on top of that £650 if you have disability payments, i.e. support of an additional £800. Pensioners would receive an additional £300 in addition to that uh, 650, and that is in addition in itself to the support that they receive uh, in terms of any existing winter fuel uh, payments and support where they receive uh, those. Uh, and in the event that we have a particularly bad coal snap, uh, there will be an additional £25 uh, pounds, uh, for where temperatures fall below uh, zero degrees over the course of, of a full week. So there, there is significant support, and that goes in addition to uh, the recently confirmed energy uh, cap, which will probably save, I believe, most households about £1,000 or so on bills, if not more. So there is an awful lot of support that's going in from government and from uh, this local authority in terms of uh, this uh, period as, as we, we come up to it, which we don't know quite what it will look like, but we're ready uh, and able to assist. So thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them either now or during the course of your discussions. Okay, uh, thank you, Richard. Um, can we ask, has Jan got anything to add just to talk us to the report? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Graham is there who can uh, deal with any of the detailed technical questions about uh, the Council Tax Support Scheme. Um, the only thing that I would add is that um, we are waiting to hear whether there will be um, a continuation of the council tax hardship scheme for a further year uh, from government. And we are not expecting to have any news of that for some time yet. Um, there may be something in the Chancellor's autumn statement, um, but that's not likely to come for at least a, at least a further month um, and maybe later. So we'll keep under consideration uh, whether um, there is such a scheme and if not, as part of the budget proposals, whether the council um, will be bringing forward its own uh, hardship scheme um, funded from its own uh, resources. So um, uh, as soon as we have any news on that, we'll obviously update Cabinet and this committee. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, okay, Liz. Creation of the hardship sorry, fund. Uh, that one. I think you're sorry. I wouldn't have heard you there. This is sorry because the bottom was working.
Yeah? Yep. Same yep. button, I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that would have been one of my questions as to um, whether we would expect to get a continuation of the hardship fund. Um, so we, st we are still in limbo with that. Um, I welcome all the, the, the help that we're giving in other means that the government, the government has brought in and, and that Richard, you know, very kindly gave all the details of. But I do think that sort of muddies the waters a bit as far as the council tax scheme is concerned. I mean, I don't know. I think we just have to have a scheme um, which will help us hit by COVID and those most vulnerable. And as a council which has publicly pledged to tackle inequality across the county, I think it's vital that our poorest people are not penalised more. Um, raising this support tax um, to its previous level of 100%, I think would go a long way to um, ensure this and demonstrate the, our commitment to supporting those people in the community. Um, we need, I think we need a simplified scheme. We can't be relying year to year on, on what's coming down from the government for this scheme specifically. Everything is welcome that comes, but I think we just need to have a scheme which will work standalone and not rely on anything. And to me, that scheme has always been the 100% as it was before 2019. I think it needs to be a fully funded government scheme, and that is something that we should be pressing the government for. Um, and my opinion was the same last year when we brought this up. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't agree to the recommendation to support the 92%. I will always go for the 100%. Um, I think we owe it to the vulnerable people amongst us, the most vulnerable, and I, I think it would be simplified, lesser the workload of um, Graham and his team, and, and just a really simplified way of going forward. So, my opinion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, do you have any other cancer? Thank you, Chair. Um, Thank you for the outline of all the help that people are getting. Um, I agree that there is a significant amount of help out there, but um, I think this help that we're giving people or people are getting both from the council, from NCC and from the government, is just bringing people up to a level playing field. I mean, we have got prices, costs of living is just going through the roof. And I think this is just bringing people up, maybe even slightly below um, an expected level of living. So for me, uh, while this goes some way to help, and I'm grateful for the help that people are getting, 100% um, I think would be much more beneficial for people. Maybe not for like forever, but I think in the immediate term and maybe for the next couple of years to help people get over this hump that we're all going through at the minute. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Thanks, Chair. Chair. Chair, I would like to continue that um, little discussion, but before that, can I say personally, representing a, a community, of quite a large community, who have no gas at all in that village, I appreciate, for one, the money discretionarily given by this county council to them at North Blythe. The, you know, to be devoid of gas, which most people take as a everyday thing. It's, it's it's tremendous help. And um, <clears throat> there was some good promotion of it put out this week by communications at County. So I piggybacked onto it and put it on my own Facebook page. And it's, it's brought a lot of questions and fortunately we have um, the experience of the Northumberland communities together who will be able to help people. So I, I, I appreciate that. I also appreciate very much what Richard Reynolds just explained of all the way everyone can be helped. But you know, that was mainly covering the cost of living crisis, the energy power crisis. Council tax support was there long before this problem. Been there a long time, council tax support. And people have always needed that support. My question, because this should be questions, would be the Graham. How do you go about saying what will happen when you don't know yourself what the government's going to give you? And the second part of that is, if you knew it was 100% relief, would that actually save this council money, 
because your resources would be less in trying to work out all these different schemes. It's, it's, I'm interested in, not too interested, but interested in the mechanics of whether it's actually easier for you just to say there's 100%. Okay, we've got thank a question, question there, so Graham. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, if I take the second question first, um, obviously if, if we were increasing the level of support, then that would cost the council money um, to do that. I mean, the point is well made that obviously where people have got um, liability and they're unable to pay or don't pay, then obviously there is a cost for us to resource our recovery action, etc. Um, I think on this specific point, though, um, Chair, the, the hardship payment that's been in play for the last three years has basically meant those right at the bottom end have actually had no liability because that hardship payment is compensated. So we haven't sort of seen the problem or the potential problem of taking recovery action against people right at that bottom end. Um, I hope that answers right. that particular so Thanks, question. Chair. That is helpful. Of course, another reason was because of COVID that uh, we didn't take those actions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, which, which, which was ever a, a disproportionate, perhaps. I, I don't know. I, I'm just wondering if... We sort of make a rod for our own back here. I agree with what Councillor Dunn said. We should be here to look at after the most vulnerable in our society, and I really believe we do. And we do it extremely well, really well. The first thing I said was praising how we help my community. But there's, there's a, a swathe of people out there, and there's not 25 million people, 25 million people, Pounds going to these people. That also includes businesses. Let's be honest here. You know, it sounded fantastic giving people 25 million. That's across the board. I just wonder if we could just make it even easier for the department and for people to understand getting back to my 400 pound thing, the number of people who ask questions because they couldn't understand it. They can't understand what they're going to get off the government by giving 100%, you know the answer. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Jackson. Yeah, can you, yeah um, a couple of things. That, you know, I, I think it has been pointed out by Councillor Wearmouth that we are actually one of the most generous councils in the whole of the North East when it comes to this. Uh, and and, and I, I think to say um, that we're uh, in danger of penalising the poor is, is completely wrong. I, I think we have, over the years, tried to do as much as ever we can with, within quite a, tiny, uh, quite, uh, a, t a tight financial envelope. Um, the, we, we, we've had this um, system in for a number of years now, and... and uh, I'm not aware that it's caused huge numbers of problems. Um, the, um, the the fact is that um, that you know ev everyone um, is is actually due to pay um, their council tax, and 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 the, those within this scheme are actually only paying eight percent of the council tax, which is actually a very small amount of money. It's just it really is just a small amount of money, and. Uh, up till now, they've actually been able to um, sort of uh, get get that, that that funding from from other schemes. Um, so I, I think we do have a, a generous system in this county, uh, and, it, and it is proven to work. Um, the, the the second point is that um, on the on the um, payment to households who are not connected to the electricity grid. Um, that you know, it's quite a big thing for Northumberland. That it's it's such a big rural county, and and there are actually people in this county who are who don't have connection to the electricity grid, um, and uh, it, it's going to be a really hard winter for 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 them. And I know in many rural communities, um, the, those people are are actually uh, amongst the most deprived in our whole county. So I'm I'm really pleased with that. And the question on, the, on that is, how are they, uh, how are they actually going to um, apply for that £400? Because it won't be automatic. Can, can someone make that 
quite clear to us so it can be publicised. Yeah, if Graham can explain that for us. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, we're currently working through those proposals at the moment where the difficulty has been actually establishing the type of properties that are off the grid. Sarah's been working along with me and my team about it and uh, it's been quite difficult, hasn't it? Um, but the idea will be that where we have details, uh, bank details from people, we will make an automatic bank transfer as soon as possible. I think there should be some payments going out this week. Similar to the £150 energy rebate, where we don't have details, we're going to give people the opportunity to provide those details for us. A fallback would be similar to again what we did with a mandatory £150 scheme, which is to use a, a facility called Post Office Pay, where we write out to people with a voucher and they're able to redeem that voucher at post offices uh, in the county. Councillor Oliver. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can I just ask for a point of clarification? Uh, Councillor Wallace mentioned that the £25 million that the council tax support scheme uh, also, uh, costs also included uh, businesses. My understanding is that it doesn't. Uh, is, that, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So it is purely for Councillor households? Oliver. Yeah, purely for households. Thank you for that clarification. Right, anything else? Uh, leader? Thank, thank you very much. Can I just come back to the point... Uh, that's been raised about the additional help that we are giving to off-grid properties. These are the ones that have no electricity, no gas. And uh, we took the decision some time ago uh, to um, find money within our discretionary scheme uh, to pay those people the £400 rather than the £100 that they were going to get. The reason we did this is because it's fairer. The problem is that um, it's not it's, it, because we have to rely on information from Northern Power Grid, it is not absolutely straightforward to establish how many and, uh, and, and where they actually are. Secondly, um, a number of these are second homes, <clears throat> which makes it more complicated again. Um, but what we are looking at uh, is the point that has been raised by one or two residents. Uh, for those properties who are... Uh, use um, solid fuel uh, or wood, for example, um, or heating oil for their homes, and whether we can think about increasing that to 400 as well. And the problem that we have is that we just have no idea how many people will be involved in that and the difficulties and the potential cost of that. Um, so I know that Jan and Graham are looking at this at the moment and they will continue to look at it, but it is not straightforward at all. Um, very easy point to make if you want to kind of, um, you know, you know get, as Richard said, sort of be slightly political on this. But we are looking at it, but we cannot just, uh, we cannot just find an easy way to do this at all at the moment because it is a question of identifying those properties. Final point I would say on that, though, is that if anyone in those properties is having a difficulty in any way, uh, they can come to our Northumberland communities together for help. And if you go on the first page of Northumberland County Council website, you will see on the first page a whole list of contacts and details around uh, getting advice uh, and support if you are struggling in any way this, this at the moment or fear for the uh, possibilities of struggling over the winter. Uh, and I really would recommend to all members that they look at that, uh, 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 because it, it shows quite clearly how much effort we're making to help those people who need our help the most. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any other? Uh, yes? Right. Thank you. Um, just a quick question for Graham. Um, Graham, uh, I know we said the 25 million was referred to there, and. In the context of that, if it was 100% rather than 92%, what, what would be the additional cost? I don't have the exact cost to hand. Roughly. <laughs> probably about, probably, probably about uh, two million, yeah. Thank you. And, and just um, a clarification for something that Jan said, where um, if further down the line this hardship fund doesn't doesn't come off um, will we definitely be going back and looking at this how, how we can fund that to the same level okay. I'm glad Richard that to answer that so, thank you Chair thank you Councillor for the question so um, 
we, we, we went through this uh, uh, sort of debate and discussion last time, and uh, this is uh, to some degree in, uh, our ability to optimise what comes from government uh, and the way that we spend it. And uh, we will be hopefully getting feedback uh, into the autumn, uh, or you know, there's some of the local good, local. Uh, Budget settlement might come to the side of Christmas, um, so you know it, it is a little bit of a moving target for us. Uh, but we will look at what comes in from government, and then we will look, as always, to see what we can do to help people. And probably at that point, we will be able to understand exactly what's happening in the wider economy as well, in terms of inflation and so on, which may come down. We, uh, one point that is worth mentioning, I think, in the recent employment data, did show that. Whilst obviously it's not the same for everybody, that pay inflation in uh, Northumberland was at around about 7%. So there has been an uptick in the amount of uh, money coming into households, which is good, albeit it does create a, an impression, inflationary pressure to some extent. Um, but uh, to, to be just clear on the point, yes, we will look at it. Can't make promises now because it's a budget and we have to make sure that we... Uh, uh, work with whatever it is that we have at the time, but that's where we would be going. Okay, thank you. Right, um, well, obviously we've got the recommendations here um, to put forward. I take it it's not going to be unanimous, so um, uh, as Chair, I'll propose the recommendations. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Jackson, all those in favour? Three. All those against? Three. I think that carries with the chairman's vote. Well, it's good to council anyway. Yeah. So it yeah. But, but yes. the recommendation of the committee is Support. yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Moving on to the next um, one. We've got broadband connectivity. That's page fifty-three. Uh, so I think again, this is Richard. Would you like to say a few words before we go to Chris? Yes, I would like to say. As few words as is practical, because oh, yeah. <laughs> despite the fact that this is my portfolio um, and uh, I, I take a great interest in it, we have a, a real expert in the form of Chris here who is far more knowledgeable the, than myself and will uh, take you a canter through this uh, report about some of the things that uh, he's uh, been doing uh, with, uh, alongside his team uh, to make sure that we get the, counts, the county better connected which, after all, is the great opportunity in terms of levelling up. We've gone through a COVID pandemic where everybody suddenly was on Zoom calls, uh, wasn't having to catch the train down to London or to Birmingham or Manchester or wherever else. Uh, and, you know, why, why on earth would you want to travel anywhere uh, if you could stay in, North, in beautiful uh, Northumberland uh, and do your work here? And Chris is the man who's going to enable us to do that. Uh, so thank you. No pressure, Chris. Over to you. Okay. So, uh, Chris, uh, if you could just, like, just give us a brief, very brief overview of the report. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, so the, the paper in front of you seeks to provide a summary of the various projects, initiatives relating to digital connectivity across our county. Uh, there are many projects in the space, some of them national, some local, some have been completed and some are underway, and we have some that are planned. Uh, we have historically, as a county, been behind the UK average for broadband connectivity and its use. Uh, you'll see in the paper that whilst we've closed the gap significantly over the last two years, we still lag slightly behind. Uh, in the paper, we've documented a brief summary of 10 projects that aim to help tackle this and to help drive forward better connectivity for our county. Uh, clearly, our biggest challenge in Northumberland is getting our most rural areas connected. Um, so I am conscious of the time, and uh, your time, sorry. There are 10 projects in the paper. I'm happy to run through those individually, equally happy to, to open up for questions. Right, okay, do we have any questions on the report? Uh, Councillor Oliver? Hi, Chris. Uh, uh, just the LFFN project. Uh, what the, the, the sort of the big thing about that was that it was going to basically take sort of broadband spines into areas from which, uh, you know, the, obviously the connect the buildings, but also that would allow local uh, residents and local businesses to connect from that fr uh, from that point. So it, making it more accessible. Uh, has, has, is that working yet? Are we seeing any signs of uh, of, of of that happening, obviously the you know the, the, the spine connections are in now, largely. Uh, but are we are we getting the additional benefit? 
So I'll try my best to, to answer that question. I may invite Sylvia to, to uh, chip in as well. Um, so yeah, LFFN stands for Local Full Fibre Network, by the way. So that concluded earlier this year, that project with BT. Um, we connected 216 sites through, through that project, and that's a mixture of uh, schools, libraries, um, depots, things like that. Um, we have, um, I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head, Sylvia might, but we have capitalised on some of that LFFN infrastructure. So a number of schools, I believe, are now connected as, as a result of that uh, LFFN um, spine, um, as, as, you, as you explained. Um, but it, it's kind of early days, I guess, in the, that it's only just been put in. And, uh, but we do expect that um, other, other providers will come in and, and uh, link into that LFFN backbone. I don't know if there's anything you would like to add, Sylvia. I think it's really just going to be the, the backbone for what we want to do in the, in the future. So um, now that that network is there, it's going to be much easier to pick it up once the WAN contract goes in and also Project Gigabit. It'll be there to help much more in the future. Uh, uh, well then, one more. One more. <laughs> uh, Project Gigabit, uh, obviously that's the game changer, that's the big one. Uh, it, you know, it seems to be uh, sort of uh, happening more slowly than it originally was intended. I think that it should have, it, 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 the contract should have been awarded by now on the original uh, timetable. Um, so, uh, are we confident that it will get started uh, early next year? And uh, is there a? I haven't actually clicked on the file uh, that we were sent by email, but can we get? Can we zoom in on this map to see which areas are Type A and Type B? Uh, connections is that available anywhere? It may be that it was in the original document, but uh, yeah. So, so Project Gigabit um, is a, a government-funded uh, um, project, so five five billion in investment uh, with a target of connecting eighty-five percent of properties to full fibre. Um, for Northumberland, um, that was split into two procurements. So there was one for North Northumberland, which is a smaller area, about 3,500 properties. Um, and the other procurement is larger, about 17,000 properties, including Durham. The North Northumberland uh, lot, if you like, that procurement is uh, concluding. We haven't had formal notice of, of the award just yet, so we're waiting on that imminently. I think it was expected in August, but it's been slightly delayed. But it is a, a government, um, central government-ran procurement exercise. So on the question of confidence, uh, I'm personally confident that we'll hear in the next couple of weeks on, on the, the North Northumberland lot. Um, and then the larger lot we should hear in November. Um, does that, did that answer? Uh, oh, yeah, there was a follow-up question yeah, on the, about, the, the map. The map yeah, abs absolutely. The, the team have, have done some great work on this, and, and Jake and the teams um, got got a map that we can we can share with with members, and, and ideally, um, I guess, pu publicise on the on the public website too, if that's possible. Uh, Liz, thank you, Chair. Um, I thank Chris for this really comprehensive report, quite technical, um, and I'm pleased to see that uh, I think somewhere in there there was a 95 percent connectivity is that right my question's not quite so technical it's just um, really pleased to see that the connectivity is improving etc but <clears throat> do we have anything in place that would assure that the least well off um in the communities can afford to actually take this up or what, is there any social sort of tariffs that we're chasing or anything like that so, so I might invite um, Sylvia, who is much closer to kind of the, the digital poverty side of things and digital inclusion, if that's all right. Okay. Um, as part of the um, procurement exercise for Type A and Type B, so Type A, North Northumberland, Type B, down from Annick and across to the to the west. As part of that, um, BDUK asked for a social value section to be put in. So our team worked on that. So we spent a lot of time with that, saying that, because really, for us, it was if the government is given the suppliers the money in order to, to put broadband in, we want to target the people who can least afford it. And that's always been something that we've been very conscious of, because we've always had a responsibility to get that take-up figure up, but it's no point if the people can't afford it. So that is a big part for us of the um, Type A and Type B procurement. 
But what is nice is that we've got one of our smaller suppliers in Northumberland who is actively looking at a social tariff. Now, there are social tariffs for residents and for, well, just for residents, but that isn't publicised a huge amount. And it's work that Ofcom do, because obviously for um, suppliers, they don't want as many people to have a social tariff because it doesn't bring them as much money in. But Ofcom do a lot of work and we do a lot of work on our social media and also um, when we go out and talk to people that <coughs> most of the big major suppliers do have a social tariff. Now they have various criteria, it could be that it's their own universal credit or it could be their own any benefits, but they are out there. We've also got just recently some access to data from ONS, which we would like to interrogate to see what is the take up of broadband in the more deprived areas of Northumberland, so that will help inform us as well. Could I just add something, sorry, to correct you, Chris, with the Type B procurement, in answer to your question, Nick, that the Type B procurement, the, um, the award will not be done until early next year. Well, it was anticipated that it would be November, but it's going to be into next year as well now. And something to add as well is in relation to the questions you asked, that we'll be working very closely with suppliers once we know who they are and um, once the contract's been awarded. BDUK will do a period of what's called due diligence, so they'll be actually looking at which premises have been included and we're wanting to work very closely with them when they do that because obviously for our team, we want to make sure that as many residents as possible and business are connected. Yeah, all this time <laughs> uh, Council Thank, thanks, Chair. I, I, I wasn't going to say anything on this because it just goes over my head, to be honest with you. I press a button and it never comes on. It's, um, I'm over the moon. Um, but basically, just some feedback and some reassurances for Councillor Dunn. The community of Camus has benefited tremendously from this, absolutely tremendously, from when I was first elected in 1991 and consultants telling us we were a population who depended on the unions and for uh, the co-op. Uh, and for the council to get things done for, we suddenly found people wanting to do things for themselves, and that's a change in culture, and that, that, that's terrific. I mention that for a reason. The excellent Gypsy Roma officer, traveller uh, officer, uh, contacted me uh, just over a week ago, knowing the success in Camus, and asked, could I help him? And this is terrific, I, I personally believe, help the Showman's Guild Heart of each community at Boomer Sund develop their broadband activity. It's Councillor Foster's ward, so naturally I contacted Councillor Wath Foster, and together with Virgin, we're moving that forward. So, I mean, I, I think that is a real indication of the success of this programme to get to a hard to reach community. But it shows you, uh, Councillor Dunn that it is available to all social groups, and that, that's so important. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's a very, very good point, and I think we commend uh, the team for all the hard work you do and dealing with all these different schemes and that deliver this connectivity. Um, so thank you. Right, um, so I'm happy to, to note that report. OK, um, next we, we have the budget consultation. Um, this again is Councillor Wimmer to introduce. Yeah, I, I will keep this one uh, brief. So you have, uh, this is the sort of the outset of the budget consultation process. You have the questions from last time, uh, and there's a, a, a question to you as to whether you want to add anything to those questions or make further suggestions to strengthen, strengthen the engagement uh, with uh, residents, partners, and so on. Uh, so really, it is over to uh, the scrutiny committee to decide if there's anything that you would like to suggest to us based on previous practice. Okay. Uh, members, do we have anything? I mean, I, I, well, I'll, I'll forward myself, um, uh, because it's a perennial issue, this committee and the council. I think um, you know, we should have a specific question about the council tax support scheme, about whether we should be prioritising, or how, how, how many people think we should prioritise that as a, an issue um, to put council resources on. Um, I don't know if the members think that's a sensible question. I don't know how it will be phrased, but I'll leave that to the team. But if we can 
conclude that topic as a, a, a obviously a neutrally phrased question because um, it can be an emotive issue. Just a, but, but a, a, a um, neutrally phrased question, just to get the feeling of residents about you know the priority they, they have that for that. That'd be useful. Uh, Councillor Warren. Yeah, one of the sort of issues with this type of consultation is that there's a sort of almost an underlying assumption that it's an unlimited pot. Uh, and it, that it's not about choices, which of course it is about choices. Um, I think it was Newcastle used to do a thing where, uh, as part of their consultation, they used to actually ask people to make those choices. And I think that, that puts it into a very different context when people are saying, well, we'll spend more on this, but that will mean we have to spend less on that. And I just wonder whether we could sort of build in uh, something similar. I realise technically it might be quite well, complex. Well, I think one way of doing it, potentially to put each of the the topics in order and do the please rank from one to the, what's the highest priority to lowest priority. I mean, that could be something like that. Yeah, uh, um, Chair, we could certainly look at that. Councillor Oliver, I was actually at Newcastle when we introduced the um, the budget calculator that you're referring to, um, and so we, we absolutely could look at um, doing something around that. One of the most interesting things about the budget calculator, if my memory serves me correctly, is that most residents uh, gave up trying to set a budget, um, which is telling in itself in terms of the very difficult choices that you as members have to make every year. Uh, uh, yes, I think, but something you know, forces people to basically rank things in order of importance to them would give us a snapshot of you know, what people think is, is important. Because um, you, know, you always get the risk of, should we spend more? Yes. And you tell most things it's more, 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 more. Because yeah, people, yeah, everything is worthy um, that we do, uh, and if we had a limited pot, we'd spend more on everything. But we don't. Uh, the leader. Yes, thank you very much. I would just say that um, it's a, it's a very important exercise that we do um, try and get as many views from residents as we can. Now the problem is that. Um, the, the, the majority of residents, as long as they are getting their frontline services delivered properly and efficiently and effectively, and that when they contact the council, those, those, those um, issues are dealt with quickly, swiftly and well, then for the majority of um, uh, residents, this is what we've found so far, that they are happy uh, for us to continue, so long as the council tax uh, increases are um, commensurate with um, inflation and cost of living and so on. That said, we are still going to make an effort, uh, as we have done for the last two years, um, in fact beyond then as well, but certainly the last two years when we've done a lot of online consultation, we're planning to do the same thing again. Um, and, and last year it worked quite well. We did get some good ideas uh, and, and it underlined that the prior priorities of this council that we have, which is value for money, looking after people that need their help most, like tackling inequalities, and also growth, um, and, and business development are important to people as well. So we will be consulting. We would like your views if, there's, if you think there's anything that we are not doing uh, that you think we should be doing. What I don't want to do is end up going to uh, local area councils and speaking um, you know, to two or three people. We need to make sure that we get out and about, and I'm more than happy, and I plan to do that. Uh, one thing I would just say, interestingly, um, that when we do consult on the budget, we, we get in and around about 400 response, something like that. Um, the consultation that we're having at the moment on um, memorial or memorials to the Queen has already had over 900 uh, responses, and we've still got another week to go. Thank you very much. Do any members have any other sessions for the question? Oh, yep, let's uh, yeah, I'll just echo what Glenn said there, actually. I mean, you know, the comparison between the number of responses for the, the, the Queen's Memorial. I think we've got to find a way of getting this out for more people to actually um, complete the survey. Um, something, yeah, I don't know how you do it, but I think if we've got 300 and something responses the same as last year, then we're not really improving on that. So there has to be a drastic sort of push to get people to fill this in. Um, yeah, perhaps um, we can get members to try and share the links on their social media and, and raise awareness as well. If we have a link to the list once it's ready. Right, OK, are we happy to agree? With, um, so we'll go forward with those suggestions uh, and uh, we'll look forward to receiving the results in due course. Uh, right, um, next report um, is... COVID grants and financial support to business 
As the, this is the final report. Uh, again, Richard's the Cabinet member. Is there anything you'd like to say before? Yes, John? Yes, thank you, Chair. So this is a, a backwards look at how we've uh, delivered on COVID support, particularly for, for businesses. Uh, it has been a huge undertaking, uh, and I'm sure you'd all join me in thanking the uh, team uh, in terms of in Revs and Vens, uh, in all of the people that support, including Sarah and, and Phil and others, and, and as well those in advance uh, Northumberland that assisted um, both those, those are there at the moment, those that have moved on during the uh, time since. It was a massive undertaking, and the reason it was a particularly large undertaking for Northumberland was because of the sheer number uh, of micro-businesses, as you can see from this paper, uh, that that involved engaging with. 88% uh, of the recipients of these funds were businesses of a few people. Uh, 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 you know, and that is because of the nature of our econ uh, economy uh, in the county. Uh, and in particular, you can see uh, where some of that uh, support uh, fell. Uh, if you look onto um, page five of the report itself, uh, large amounts of that uh, resting in the Berwick upon Tweed constituency, reflecting the nature of those, all of those small B and Bs, all of those people who would simply not have gotten through. Uh, the pandemic uh, and all of the restrictions that were placed upon us all uh, had it not been for this, the swift and effective delivery uh, of the team. Uh, and as well, um, you know, thank you to everybody uh, of, uh, from uh, all parts of the council in terms of councillors and officers who fed through the feedback from uh, members of the public uh, and in particular those businesses because it was a, a, a task that was started from from scratch, basically, uh, we we had the information on where business existed, uh, in terms of who was paying business rates, where there were where there was business rates. So obviously, some of them uh, would be covered by business rates relief. We had all sorts of businesses affected in all sorts of different ways. We had discretionary elements to it. We had to uh, go through uh, a huge thinking process uh, to uh, come up with what was considered to be best and I think that uh, officers and councillors from all parties and non working together uh, administration and scrutiny managed to get something that really worked for Northumberland residents and ultimately that was delivered very very quickly uh, when it came to to uh, uh, delivery of that cash uh, and you can see there some of some of the amounts 209 million pounds uh, and a bit uh, that went out to business during uh, the period uh, March 20 through uh, April 22 uh, to over, and that was that uh, totaled 39,000 individual pa uh, payments. An absolutely massive task, huge well done to the team, uh, and I hope that uh, you agreed that they, they did uh, such a fantastic job as I consider that they did. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Jan, is there anything you'd like to, to add? Uh, no, Chair, um, other than just to uh, endorse what Councillor Weirmouth has said, this was a mammoth undertaking involving a large number of people um, from right across the Council. Um, and I'd just like to express my um, personal appreciation for all of their hard work, um, because uh, this was no simple thing um, to, to get this money out of the door to the businesses that needed it. And at times, um, I know that the team were working under huge pressure. So, um, so I'm glad to see that their hard work and their dedication being acknowledged here. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I think I agree. Uh, we all agree that the, that the hard work should be um, uh, noted. Um, on a personal level, I did declare that my business received a, a grant and I just want to commend the efficiency um, and speed at which we sort of user-friendly way, which uh, was very impressive and very quick. So, um, our personal, our personal experience to say it was a very well-done job. Uh, Councillor Oliver? 
Yeah, I, I should probably declare that I was actually involved in this process, so I feel slightly like marking my own homework. But, uh, but I mean, I saw firsthand the way that, that the officers responded across the different teams. I'm surprised Graham's hair is not greyer than it is. Uh, but but it, it, it was a phenomenal response. I mean, this was something, you know, culturally that department was used to collecting money and suddenly it was being asked to give it away. Uh, and, uh, and obviously it had to be done properly. Uh, and there was a huge amount... Uh, so lots of departments were involved, finance, revs and bends, policy, legal, uh, and it was, it was a phenomenal effort. Uh, we were the fourth fastest county uh, with one of the, the big uh, grants to get it out there, and it was essential that we did get it out there because actually businesses would succeed or fail based on how quickly we could deliver that money. And only last Thursday, walking my dog through the wood near my house, um, somebody I'd never met before stopped me and said, you're Nick Oliver, and I said, he just said thank you to the, you know, the effort that the, your council did to get those business grants to us. You kept me in business. My business would have failed otherwise. Uh, and I'm sure that's, that's this true for hundreds, if not thousands, of businesses across the county. So it really was a fantastic example of people working together to solve a problem, solve it at speed, uh, and, and solve it successfully. It was, it was delivered really well. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Moss? Thanks, Chair. I, I would very much like to echo that. I think it's a phenomenal job what's been done, especially under the circumstances. Um, I'd also like to um, compliment Sarah and Graham for the report. I could understand it, and I wish more reports were like that. And it, it, it's all—it's all—it's mind-boggling the numbers. But I, you know, we, we mentioned the broadband. How we just went, oh, it's nice pictures. Th this we could really understand, and, and it hits home. But I appreciate Councillor Wemel's comments as well. Because I thought to myself when I'm looking at this, coming from South East Northumberland, oh, there's been more advertising for this, these grants in the Berwick area. But after the explanation given, I can understand that. And when you look at the calf, it explains it even better. When you look at Cramlinton, for example, these huge chemical factories, these huge warehouses excluded, but we picked them up and we got there. The only thing I would add, Chairman, uh, for communication, I chair NALC, and one of the things we had continuously, what we found out, Councillor Dunn found this out, I found it out, Councillor Hunter found it out, because we're on both county and, and uh, the parishes. <clears throat> we were getting information, but the parishes weren't. There's 1,147 parish councillors, there's 160 parish councils to do almost a weekly <coughs> e-news. You want to get information out of people, Include them in your communications for the next time COVID happens. That was, that was tongue in cheek, by the way. And, and whatever you need to, whatever you need to, involve them. And you just need to send it to one person, and he'll cascade that out. And it's a huge saving on your resources. But it's what Glenn Sanders and I is very keen on: partnership and practice, and working together. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. A very good suggestion. There. Right. Uh, so we're happy to to know. And we'll that report. Okay. Right. Uh, next thing. Thank you very much. Uh, on the agenda is the um, work, work program. Sean? Yep. Uh, not, nothing to add, Chair, other than just to highlight the, uh, your, your remarks on the forward plan. The, the, the budget and medium term financial plan will be deferred to the December meeting for the reasons you outlined, Chair. Uh, uh, and therefore, we will probably. Um, Council the November meeting. Yeah. Okay. Right, um, so next bit um, is urgent business. Any urgent business? No. So uh, then I'd like to do a proposal to um, go to part two, exclude the press and public. Do I proposed? Please, thanks. Cheers. Uh,